You mentioned uh, water earlier and, and, and getting a, a pH a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. How yep. important is the whole pH balance in the body and you know what do we need to do to, to get it to where we should? Sure. I, I believe from everything I've seen that the pH balance in the body is exceptionally important. Uh, most of the people that talk about pH don't know what the hell they're talking about. <laughs> and so somebody will say, you're too acid. I mm -hmm. like, I, you know, I've got this thing about teaching. But trying to teach in a way that isn't putting somebody down. I mean, I want people to learn it. So somebody will say, you know, to somebody else, oh, you're too acid. And I'll be in the room and they'll know who I am. And I'll, I'll stop them and I'll go, what do you mean by she's too acid or he's too acid? Well, they're too acid. Well, do you know what the pH scale is? Well, yeah, sort of. Well, what does it go from? I don't know. Well, it goes from 0 to 14. Okay, and, and do you know what 7 is? And they may know. Yeah, 7 is neutral by definition. Mm -hmm. So if 7 is neutral by definition, then you do not have acid until you're below 7. So if you tell that person they're too acid, are you saying that their blood is below 7? And the person who is ignorant, you know, not stupid, could be a very smart person, is ignorant, says, well, yeah. I go, well, th that's not true. Well, how do you know? They're not dead. If you have a, a below 7 pH of your blood, you're dead. Hmm. So people use this term without knowing enough about it. So yes, pH is very, very important. It seems from the experts that I lis listen to, uh, and I'm always willing to learn something new, that the blood of a healthy person, the blood itself, should have a pH of 7.40 to 7.46. But very few labs are testing blood pH. The body will do everything within its power to keep the blood pH in the range it wants to be in because everything works better. Sure. And so it will, for example, if there are too many acid-forming foods coming in because somebody happens to love coffee, which is a phenomenally acid food, mm. uh, or tomatoes, which aren't necessarily bad for you, but if you eat a lot of them, they're very acid-forming. So it just depends. Uh, sodas, oh my goodness, sodas are extremely acid. Between coffee and soda pop, people are trying to push their body in the wrong direction. So. Somebody ingests some of these, brings in you know, more acid than the body can handle, and the body says, well, uh, we've got all of these alkalizing systems, but they're not working well enough, uh, so we're going to take one of our other buffers, uh, calcium, and we're going to pull it out of our bones, causing osteoporosis, to buffer some of the acids. And so osteoporosis is often looked at by holistic people in, in many ways as possibly even predominantly a disease of pH because the body's pulling out calcium to buffer. There are lots of other causes also, but that's one of them. We have two other fluids that get tested, and blood doesn't get tested often enough, and one is saliva, mm -hmm. and the other is urine. It appears from all of my training that your saliva pH should be similar to the blood pH, but as a general rule, I'm just going to say I want the saliva pH of my patients to be between 7.0 and 7.5 all day long. The blood is actually higher than that. Uh, now, the blood is not higher than that. 7.40 uh, to 7.46. So it, it varies. But it's close. They're close. But if somebody's saliva is below 7, their body isn't doing a good enough job of getting rid of acids. That's the best way to look at it. Okay. If, you're, if your saliva is below 7, and the pH test strips that are just uniform are hard to read. I tell people, get one of the good German ones. Uh, Macquarie Nagel makes one that has three different dots on it, and all three dot colors have to line up with the right thing on the chart so mm -hmm. you can read it. It's not very, very distinctive because it's only showing about a 0.5 pH difference, but you can easily see this is 7.0, not 6.5, or this is 7.5, not 7.0. And if they don't have 7.0 to 7.5, we have a big problem. The urine, totally different. Everybody misunderstands urine pH. Somebody will say, oh, well, you know, urine pH should, should be 7.5 or 8. Urine pH is 8 in cancer patients. Why? And I was actually part of a research study that was done at the Livingston Foundation Medical Center on pH many, many years ago. Uh, they were doing the study while I was working there part-time, giving them a hand along with my full-time private practice. And I came in every morning at like 7.30 in the morning, and they used a biological terrain assessment device, BTA, which I don't even think is still made, to test every patient's 
first morning urine, they had to bring it in. Their first morning urine had to be brought in with them. Their saliva when they were in the office and their blood. Those got tested there, the urine they got brought in. And all these cancer patients, their blood was always below optimal. Their saliva was below optimal. And their urine was alkaline, where a lot of people that don't know anything about pH think it should be. And the first time I saw the first few, and I talked to the doctor who was doing this study, and I went, wait a minute. We just saw three cancer patients with major cancer in their body that are here at the cancer clinic, and all their urines are 7.8 to 8.2. What's going on? And the doctor looked at me. He said, you studied pH? I said, yes. He said, well, what was the blood? I said, the blood was below what it should have been. What was the saliva? I said, the saliva was below what it should have been. He said, so what's happening? I said, well, acids are building up in the body. He said, very good. And where are the acids supposed to come out? And I got it immediately. This is like 14 years ago. The urine. The urine is how we get rid of excess acids. Mm -hmm. Cancer patient is unable to get rid of excess acids. So instead of their urine being acid like it's supposed to be, the acid is building up in their cellular structure mm -hmm. and making the cancer cells happy and is not getting out in the urine. So when somebody says, what should urine pH be? Pfft, I don't know. Depends on what the person's eating. If somebody's eating a lot of the wrong things, maybe their urine pH should be four and a half because we've got to get a whole bunch mm -hmm. of this acid out. You yeah. know, maybe if they're eating fairly, fairly healthy, it should be five and a half. Maybe it should be six. Maybe it should be six and a half. But it shouldn't be seven and a half. That's where we get rid of our acids. How come their urine isn't acid? Mm. So unless we're giving them alkalizing salts, you know, chemicals to help alkalize the body, which will, of course, change the urine, I wouldn't want their urine to be above 7. I want it to be below 7. Now, if you change that question and you say, well, but how about populations that never get cancer? We don't have too much of that around anymore on our planet, no. but we did a long time ago, the original Eskimos. They never saw any cancer. You know, uh, Stephenson said he never saw any cancer. The doctors he talked to there never saw any cancer until they veered from their traditional diet of 100% uh, basically animal protein, animal fat as far as fish. They never ate any vegetation. Other parts of the world, they do eat vegetation. But when they're eating everything the way the land is giving it to them, nothing's coming out of packages. They didn't have refrigeration. There was mm -hmm. no electricity. Uh, what are those tribal populations that are in exceptional health? if we can still find a couple that good old, you know, human, uh, whatever you want to call us, hasn't made inroads in and changed what they're doing. But if they're really eating their traditional diets, and therefore they don't have coffee coming in, they don't have soda pop coming in, they don't have, you know, overcooked uh, meats coming in, which make lots of acid, whereas the rare or raw meats don't, what would their pH be if everything was being done right? I don't know. I really don't know. My guess is, since our metabolic process produces acid waste, that it's still probably going to be below 7. But maybe if you're eating so many vegetables that are alkaline, maybe it's still going to be able to be 7 or above, and it's still getting rid of some. I, I, don't, I don't know. But it sure as heck is not going to be super low because they don't have all these extra acids that we have to get rid of, nor is it going to be super high because the body has acidic waste that it has to get rid of. Mm. So it would be an interesting study to study traditional populations. And, and maybe somebody has, and it's not a research study I've looked at.